According to one author, the way teachers grade students has not changed since the industrial age, and it's time to modernize that approach. Well, now Fresno Unified School District is offering teachers training in his methods and research. But will a new grading system help students earn higher grades, but cost them a deeper understanding of what they're trying to learn and make them less fit to compete in the real world? Hear why critics say they're concerned. And good morning, this is Eric Rollins, the Constitutionalist here on 1550 KXEX, the best talk in town. Eric Rollins is the host of a weekly podcast in which he freely shares his opinions on just about anything and everything. My goal is always to inform, to move people to action. Michelle Scary is a practicing chemist at a local environmental and engineering firm and a candidate for trustee for the Fresno Unified School District's Area 4. A lot of the reasoning behind a public school failing, FUSD failing our, our students, seems to be um, things not related to education. Although from different worlds, both say they share a deep concern and critical eye for one thing, the Fresno Unified School District. For large school districts, it is in the bottom 5%. So large urban school districts, bottom 5% in the nation, not in California, in the nation. So from 2009, our reading and math proficiency rates uh, were um, like 15% and 12%, and now they're 13% and 11% for reading and math proficiency. A performance record Scary has now put into graphic illustrations with, she says, numbers straight from... The Fresno Unified School District. So those are Fresno Unified's numbers? Self-reporting numbers, correct. Numbers that both fear will only get worse with a new approach to grading that Scary and Rollins say Fresno Unified is already introducing to its teachers. They have a book called Grading for Equity by Joe Feldman, and the book really concerns me. This book, and it concerned him enough that Rollins took it before the Fresno Unified Board of Trustees in September. I have some real problems with this. I think it's, grading for equity is really the wrong path forward. Wrong, says Rollins, because... They proposed two ideas, either eliminating homework because it wasn't fair to those kids that are disadvantaged. Or the other thing they talked about doing was you'd be able to turn in homework whenever for full credit. Now, there's some problems with that. How does that prepare a kid for the, for the real world? And that's not all, Michelle Scary adds. So if you're of a minority, if you have socially disadvantaged background, then, or economic disadvantaged background, you actually can start with a grade already before you put your name on the top of the paper. I honestly think it's from good intentions. Um, I, I really think that a lot of people think that this is, this is going to help students from disadvantaged backgrounds, but really in the long, it's a short-term gratification that we're, that we're giving students and we're sacrificing long-term competence and confidence. A trade-off that no one wants. But is it true? We contacted author Joe Feldman, a former teacher and high school administrator himself, for his take on what grading for equity is all about. Equitable grading means that we want our grades to be more accurate. Traditional grading practices, um, one of the things that happens is that we average performance over time. So if a student has to do five essays over the course of a unit, and they do badly in the first ones, and then do better later, and then do well at the end. What that does, uh, traditionally what we do is we average that performance over time. So maybe if a student did like D-level work, and then C-level work, and then A-level work, we average that and give them a C or a C plus. They're actually at an A-level. Um, it just took them a number of times to get there. Feldman says grading for equity can also help limit race, socioeconomic, and gender-based bias. We know that um, girls oftentimes are more adherent to a lot of classroom compliance ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and what this is doing is taking out those biases that if you aren't necessarily raising your hand for every discussion or you don't come in and sit quietly all the time, Right? That is not going to penalize or warp the accuracy of your grade. And I think Fresno, to its credit, is trying not to get um, left behind around that and wants to bring its students up into um, the modern era with thinking about grading. For now, Rollins and Scary say they remain unconvinced. What I would like to get across to constituents, to parents, to grandparents, is that what does the diploma mean if this student has an elementary school proficiency in reading, writing, and mathematics? My hope is that we will do better because this is a nice city. These are good people. They deserve to have a good education for their kids. 
Feldman says the strategies outlined in his book are now being implemented in hundreds of districts and schools across the country. He also says it's helping to increase student performance and motivation and reduce stress in many of those schools. It's too early to assess what kind of impact grading for equity will have upon student performance in Fresno Unified Schools. Carlos Castillo, Instructional Superintendent over Curriculum, Instruction and Professional Learning at Fresno Unified tells me that optional training in grading for equity is currently being provided to teachers and administrators who want to learn about it. He also adds teachers are free to apply the grading strategies in their own classrooms at their discretion. If you have a story to tell about a crisis in school or how people are working together to overcome challenges, call us at 559-302-9242 or email kmphclassroomtips at gmail.com.